Welcome to Camping with Steve. I'm at an abandoned oil well today, so I'm going to try and tuck in around the corner there with my car if it'll make it, and uh, then we'll get camp set up. Weaseled the car in kind of like that in case I gotta take off quickly. I'll set up the camp right behind it. Actually, I'll probably move it over a little bit. Uh, it looks like an easier path to drive out right here. And let's go check out that abandoned oil well. I'm sure the car is not completely hidden if anybody was to drive through. Not at all, but it's gonna be dark soon. And the only tracks there actually are here from vehicles are from me yesterday driving through to check this thing out so a couple of pump jacks um it's like an electrical panel there that's been pretty raided and uh there's been no activity here for a while the power has been disconnected to the site and uh yeah ah texas t yeah there are still a couple of pump jacks here uh there's a whole bunch of stuff that i'm not sure what it is so let's just go look I won't pull that handle. Um, pipeline is discontinued, just as I thought. Uh, over here, this one still hooked up to the pump jack, and it tells me what's that? Oh, yeah. February 2016 was the last time anything's kind of been checked out here, so that's been sitting here for a while. Oh, there's a pressure gauge. Let's see. Zero PSI. Sounds good to me. That all checks out nicely. Another one of these. A um, couple of these tanks here. Uh, whatever was in them, I don't know, but they got these little containers to catch any leaks. So there's, there's that. And then a couple of these things. I just won't touch anything here at all. Um, it all looks extremely dangerous. And I got a, I'm sure all the oil field people are rolling their eyes. Little shack here, and I'm sure this is locked. Oh, you gotta be kidding. Okay, um, yep, this looks like something I should not go anywhere near. I'm out of here. So a lot of the electrical switch gear has been pretty ripped open and torn apart. Anything that had any copper in it has been all stripped out. So, you know, people have taken, I guess, anything of value. Oh. Oil well controller. Hmm. That looks pretty empty as well. Well, they had three phase power here, but that's disconnected right at the pole. And there is not much here other than this. And that's pretty much all we've got here. So the car up there is a little bit visible, but the sun is setting quick and it's, it's not that obvious if somebody were to just quickly drive through. Another couple of weeks though, that'll be covered in leaves, nature's camouflage. And we're gonna hike back up there and set up a shelter for the night. I got this um, tent cot thing with me today. The perfect easy thing to set up. And I thought if I could get a little further in that all of it would be invisible. It's not gonna happen, but we don't have to worry about that because we're on county land. That means we're supposed to camp here. Just have to remember how it goes up. Just perfect. A little foamy in here. I'll be 
pure, pure sleeping comfort. Not bad at all. Got a rain fly too. Just perfect. Perfect bed for one. Don't want to grab that one. Okay, well does that ever call for a step two? Yum. Yeah. I got the uh, dry grass cleared from this spot here. I'm gonna be using a barbecue tonight to cook on. And I also want to avoid using a, a campfire because I am pretty sure there is a pipeline right away going through here. And that may arouse some suspicion if people see flames and uh, smoke coming off of a, a pipeline cut. So, I'm just gonna lay low a uh, little charcoal barbecue and we'll cook up some food in a bit. But, uh, cheers everyone. Uh, this is a great spot. We'll get this warming up because this will take 45 minutes or an hour to be able to cook on it. And it's nice and self-contained. There's no more fire bands or anything like that. So this is uh, a responsible thing to be doing right now. Yeah. going. I'm not even lying. The instructions on this say when the fire is lit to add more. It's kind of lit. That should do it. That should do it. We should be good to cook here in a few minutes, but uh, I think I'll address why I'm camping in an abandoned uh, or orphaned oil well. Aside from the fact that it's an awesome spot to camp and it's free, uh, there's two things going on in Alberta right now, where I live, that are in the news all the time. A shortage of campsites and campgrounds, and it's so bad that people are scalping campsites, like they're reserving campsites and selling them at inflated prices. And things are nuts this year, um, so we have a definite shortage of campsites and campgrounds. Then there's also a bunch of orphaned, abandoned, and inactive oil wells, like our little friend over there. So they're going to have to be reclaimed um, through the taxpayers usually. And what that means is ripping it all out and planting trees and turning it back into what it used to be. But I can see a bit of a common solution here. Um, there are roads going to these places. We've got a few acres there of leveled, graveled surface. There's three-phase power running right down the road and ending there. I don't know anybody in politics, and I know a few people in oil and gas that I've talked to, but these things uh, are just natural campgrounds. All we need is to get rid of the pump jacks, a uh, little soil analysis or whatever, and um, a few fire rings and a pit toilet I think people would be happy to go out camping here. And there are estimates that there's 100,000 of these or so in Alberta that are just sitting around like this. And 
that's a common solution to a lot of problems and people aren't driving you know four or five hours to get to a campsite that's completely packed uh, people are reserving as soon as it comes open online for the year and they're booked up within hours so to take the load off of those huge campsites and for the people that really just want somewhere to camp for the night like this without too much services you know I really wouldn't mind if there's no power or or anything if it's close to home there's tons of these places it's just peppered with all these oil sites which could work of course I don't know much so it may be a dumb idea but I think there is potential here so if anybody knows anybody in politics in Alberta or oil and gas or the abandoned uh, orphan well association or something uh, you can reach out to me and we'll see uh, we'll see if we can actually get the ball rolling on turning some of these into campgrounds but that's got me uh, it's got me hungry all this thinking about camping and campgrounds so I'm gonna cook some food time for a barbecued flatbread uh, pizza thing get this non bread should be good got a spray canister of uh, I can open it spray canister of olive oil a lot easier than brushing it on and it's not full of chemicals um, ingredients extra virgin olive oil so that's good Yes. And I will reaffirm that we're not in bear territory where we'll have problems. So, real simple. Just down a little pizza sauce. Can't go wrong with uh, mozzarella. What have we got? We've also got artichoke hearts. That's good. Some sliced black olives. Uh, they're controversial. This is where I'm going to lose some subs. Some cherry tomatoes. And of course, throw on some red onion. Why not top that off with a little Asiago? And we'll see what happens. I've never done this before. I just thought it might work. On you go, little guy. Godspeed. Mm. Mm. It's smelling pretty good. Let's see what we got. Not bad, not bad at all. got uh, she's cooked on the bottom and uh, on the top looks pretty good with a harder barbecue might have worked a little better but that's certainly not too bad for out in the woods oh, yeah yep not too bad at all not too shabby mmm So glad I have more ingredients for more of these. It's actually quite, quite good. Gets the smoky flavor on it from the briquettes as well. Taste the heat, not the meat. Actually, there's no meat on this one. Should have brought some bacon or something, I guess. Okay, this is so good. I have to turn the camera off and just eat this. That was delicious. Um, <laughs> We still got a bit of light out, so I want to wander down this pipeline clearing and see where it goes. Let's see. We haven't gone far down here and somebody's house is across the road on the other side, so. That explains the dogs I heard earlier. But this quarter section we're on is um, county land, so we are okay. I just don't want to bug the neighbors too much.
I think places like these have all the potential in the world to be a very good campground. There's the road here you can drive up and then it gets a little thinner and it goes around the corner following the edge of the quarter section there and then it turns into like a quad trail. So uh, there's not much here other than just this little pipeline cut and the uh, old oil lease over there. And the rest is beautiful Aspen Parkland. It all kind of looks the same around here. Uh, we got songbirds, we got bunnies, uh, all that usual type of stuff. And yeah, it's just the transition from when the Great Plains turned into boreal forests and uh, mountainous foothills, so we're right in that zone. And it's not too bad. I did a little digging. Um, I found a sign of the company involved with this operation. And I'm not going to name names. But, uh, yeah, they owe a lot of back taxes to a bunch of counties, and probably this one too. So, it's just one of those things where, like, I live in this county, so my taxes are helping to cover this whole place, which, in my opinion, should be a campground. That's, uh, that's where I stand on that, believe it or not. <laughs> yes, I know what we're all thinking. Climb up to the pump jack and ride it like a horse. But it's extremely dangerous. Um, I don't like heights. I'm out here alone and there's bad cell service. So I don't want any problems. We're just gonna have to admire it from the ground. Losing our daylight power here real fast. Still got some coals. Might do up another midnight snack of a little flatbread pizza thing. Uh, but I have to give a huge shout out to all the folks that have donated to the beer donation fund. It is not going to waste. It is going to beer and adventures. Thank you all for watching. Happy birthday to all the folks that are having birthdays uh, this week or, or today even. So. Yeah, we'll crawl into here in a moment uh, after I maybe make another one of these. And I'll just go over a rundown on the tent again because I picked this up and camped in it the one night. Uh, really easy setup. And as a matter of fact, this exact camping I'm doing right now is what they're designed for. You know, pull off a road somewhere, pull it out, set it up, and uh, right beside your car, pack it up in the morning, and off you go. So we're using it exactly how they're designed. Like uh, even on a quad, it would be a little bit big. Um, a side-by-side -side, uh, could probably work, but it, it takes up a lot of space and it's pretty heavy. So I'm thinking this is basically vehicle accessible camping, sets up in a breeze. And no, I'm not sponsored to say that, but uh, I'll give credit where it's due. Yeah, yeah it's just about that bedtime. Inside the tent here, I can show this. Yes, here's a screen, and then there's also the uh, the inside flap, so you can enjoy the breeze. Um, it's a little a little cramped for sure. You've got uh, a little ridge line up there. There is, as a matter of fact, a, a beverage cup holder there. Um, there's other flaps on the other sides that open up, and of course a pouch for bear spray or what have you. And yeah, it's a uh, really uh, really a bare bones basic type of thing, but sets up really quick, and it's got the cot and the tent and everything else all rolled into one. Kind of like sleeping in a coffin, um, but yeah. for one person, uh, I think it's all right. Ooh, yes. Ooh. Okay, I'm sure you can't see anything. Real hard to film in here, actually. 
Oh. See you guys in the morning. Good morning. That was a fantastic sleep. Uh, I'm really starting to appreciate these tent cots and that they hold in the heat so well. Um, it's basically just a small space that my body heat can keep it up to temperature really well. And I'm using bigger sleeping bags than uh, I normally bring on a stealth trip that just fit in the backpack. I take whatever I want here in the car. So it's a good thing it was keeping me warm because it was below freezing last night, uh, according to the weather on my phone. And, you know, yes, it is May, but it's also Alberta. And we're not really safe from freezing temperatures until ever. Um, any month of the year we can have freezing temperatures. So it's just a fact of camping here. But it also kills off a lot of the crawly things that we don't want here. Um, you know, there are ticks, but the place is not infested with them. Uh, snakes and that type of thing, they don't really survive here. So there's take the good with the bad, I guess. At any rate... I'm going to start uh, packing this up and heading into town. Um, I'm going to talk about the app that I'm using to find these places. Um, not sponsored by them or anything, but uh, it's the uh, the iHunter app. Um, it's used by hunters, uh, obviously, and it's to find little, uh, little spots to uh, camp or to go to Crown Land where you're allowed to be there and it's, it's basically for finding public land really easily. And that is something that, uh, that I definitely need in the course of uh, my day. So, um, yep, yeah. pull this apart and we'll get out of here before we overstay our welcome. Can't beat that. Never gets old how quickly those things uh, set up and tear down because I set up a tent at least 52 times a year um, and it gets a little old putting the tent poles together and all that. So, uh, yeah, as I was saying about that app, um, it's called iHunter. It's on the Apple Store and the Google Store, whatever they're called now. But, uh, yeah, it's got this map and it shows you in Canada, um, or in Alberta anyways, I don't know. I don't know how widespread this app is, but it's used, yes, by hunters to find out where they can hunt. And it has to be like public land, or if it's private land, you have a way to kind of find out who owns it and get a hold of them. So it's a pretty neat app, and there are add-ons you have to buy for it. Like I had to buy a county map to actually find out where the crown land is, but it was $15 for the year. And, um, I already paid for it uh, right now with a free night of camping, so it doesn't get better than that. Um, but uh, yeah, on other news, um, <clears throat> we're beginning the major work on our house. Um, as some may know, we bought a foreclosed house last year that needed a ton of work. Basically, a teardown, but it, was, it had beautiful potential, good bones, you know. So we're pulling straw out of the walls. It was insulated with straw and some of the dividing, the devising walls are made out of straw with concrete on them. Um, there was clearly no electrical code pulled. Um, I hope there's no inspectors from the county listening, but uh, we're fixing that. Um, we are gutting it, uh, putting up steel studs this year because uh, it's cheaper than two by fours. <laughs> Hard to believe. And um, yeah, then we're going to be rewiring the whole thing, getting everything set up uh, so that we can uh, live a comfortable life um, and not, like, we have partially finished bedrooms, so we've just been, beautiful wife and I have been in the living room, um, and it's set up like a hotel suite, right? Like, we have our kitchen, the bed, a little sitting area, and a bathroom. So we're off to uh, hotels now. Um, on longer term rates between hotels and hopefully the school bus. Uh, so we're going to be traveling around and also kind of hel helping on this house a little bit as well. And Crazy Neighbor is going to be helping on the house as well. So, you know, we can uh, 
we'll figure out something where, you know, he can take care of the crew for a little bit and then, you know, I can take care of the crew and then me and him can give him a break and we just go camping. But um, <clears throat> it should not interrupt the flow of the videos. Uh, that's that's my, my absolute goal this year because last year we started working on it and it was, I kept getting sucked into the work um, and I would miss, you know, a week because, you know, we had no running water and I had to fix that and <laughs> all these things. So, uh, yeah, that's the goal. Anyways, uh, let me get out of here. Uh, thanks for watching. And um, if you are considering camping in an oil well, uh, an abandoned oil well, um, just do your research. Uh, make sure it's not private property. Make sure it's not uh, a sour gas well uh, with H2S. Um, and make sure... Uh, that it, you're not in in any uh, type of a danger as far as the you know pipeline excavations or anything like that. So, time to get out of here. I can ramble on all day. See you guys later.